Welcome to The Actor's Choice, where the actors and actresses have a chance to talk about themselves and their careers. Join us now for the next hour as we explore the marvelous industry of acting by actors and actresses from today's exciting show business world. And now, direct from Hollywood, here's your host, Ron Brewington. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Brewington, and welcome to The Actor's Choice. Roll it, Tony. Eight minutes and 46 Hello. seconds. I will never have Levy Lee Simon marks the return of the Roby Theater Company with a heated discussion. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our first two guests today are the best you can find in Black Theater world. The first guest was a gentleman by the name of Levy Lee Simon. He's an award-winning writer, an actor. A... <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you just heard, my first guest today is a very well-known writer, uh, actor, uh, director, and producer who is multi-award winning. He's an author of over 20 plays, as they say in the business, not bad, not bad. <laughs> he goes everywhere with his directing credits are seen by many, many play lovers. I could go on and on and on and on and on, mm. but without further ado, please welcome Levy Lee Simon, a.k.a. Levy Lee. Hey, hey, hey. Good How morning, you doing? How you doing, Ryan? And welcome back once again to the Actors' yes. Choice. So what are you doing these days, sir? What are you doing? What am I doing? The, well, it's the beginning of a new year, and uh -huh. uh, 2023 was um, very exciting for me. You know, I had um, uh, a play done here, um, a heated discussion revisited by the Roby Theater Company, Ben Guillory's company. I did a solo performance um, back in June, my first mm -hmm. one, Odyssey, Race and Racism, part of the Hollywood Fringe Festival. I had a production in New York with the Negro Ensemble Company. Um, I had another production in here in L.A. back in the fall. And and I had major surgery um, oh boy. in December, um, but I'm on the other side of that. You know, I, I planned it for December, so... We can start 2024 with a roar, you know, mm. get, get it going. Like I say, soar in 24. <laughs> mm. Let's go back for just yeah. a moment. The year was 2017, sir. You mm. were the actor and producer for a show, a movie called The Last Revolutionary. Yes. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Of, of <laughs> course. Of course. Well, it started out as a play. Uh -huh. And, and, um, I I dedicated that play to um, some uh, not a former uh, a present Black mm -hmm. Panther and um, another one of my mentors Nathan George who has passed away uh -huh. uh, recently and uh, it was a two character play that was done at the National Black Theater Festival and I met uh, Michael Brewer who was a d director who said uh -huh. this will make a great movie. And we ended up raising the money. We made the independently. We made the movie, and it premiered at the um, Pan African Film Festival in 2017. Did something like seven or eight festivals that year, and now can be seen on um, on Amazon Prime. Um, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's available for people to see it still. You know, and we've gotten high ratings on it, mm -hmm. uh, very high ratings. So. Maybe the question that I that I say to you all the time, who don't you know? I mean, for God's sake, you know a whole bunch of people. Well, you stay around long enough, you will know a whole bunch of people, <laughs> you know? And, yes. and I've been around for a while now, even though I may not look like it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Where, you know, older, you know, that good black don't crack, as they say, you older. Oh, yes, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm 25 years old, so I don't yeah, even you know what I mean, that. yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> by the way, it was a lady by the name and an actress and producer, Eva Marie Frederick, who introduced me to you. That's how I first met you. Wow, Eva Marie, yes. Yes. Yeah, I saw Eva. Um, let's see, we were at a, a Thanksgiving event this year, or well, this past year, 2023. Uh -huh. And she's doing great. She's a wonderful, wonderful actress, wonderful, and even a better person. You know, yes. um, so uh, I thank her uh, for making that uh, connection between you and I. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I thank yeah. her very, very much for that. Uh, it's, we, we got just a few minutes, but I just want to make sure that we get this in if we don't ask any other questions. And mm -hmm. that is, 
you have, a, I, I fell upon this video. Tony, you ready? This is 11A. Can you get ready? In three, two, one. Roll it, Tony. The JB. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> I am a black man. Yes. See me. I am the language I do not speak, but hear me. I am rivers of emotion, feel me. I am the fruit of life, taste me. I am the earth, touch me. I am song and dance and tribal rhythm, the heartbeat of life, know me. I am the man that stood on auction blocks, head high, teeth bared, stripped naked, so the eyes of the world could be envious in my nobility. Marvelous. Yeah, yeah. When I you saw know, it, I I'm, I'm very proud of that video, and um, you what's know, what's the name of it, sir? The name of this? I am, I am. I am. Yeah, I am, and I'm very proud of it, uh, especially on a on a day like today, Martin Luther King Day. I, you know, you actually reminded me. I think I'll post that on Facebook today. You yes. know, because it's so apropos to to the day. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. When I saw it, I said, hey, we got to put this on the screen and let people see this because you wrote it, you performed in it, you did. I mean, this is uh, uh, over 10 years ago that you did this, by the way, folks. Yes, yes, yes. Over 10 years ago. And back then, that shows you the, the way this gentleman had the style. He he knew what he was doing, writing and <laughs> going up. Shoot, I can sit up all day long talking about it. Uh, uh, you said a moment ago, Odyssey, race and racism, a play. Can you tell us about that? Well, it's actually, oh, it's a long, not, the, the shortest version is that um, uh, Juliet Jeffers, a director here in town, wonderful director, uh -huh. uh, was doing um, solo shows about racism. And she called me and asked me if I, if I would be interested in doing something. I hadn't done anything, long story short, I sat down and I pulled some excerpts from a memoir that I was writing, which by the way, was just published. Yes. And uh, just came out. And um, I pulled some stories from that. I took some of my spoken word stuff and I put it together into a solo show. And we actually presented it first in 2020, you know, virtually um, without an audience. And then, and it went really well. We got like something like four or 500 people that night. And then um, I was able to do it uh, this year, this past mm -hmm. year, 23 part of the Hollywood Fringe Festival in person for the first time. You know, we had great turnout and um, and great response to it. And I'm hoping to do that in 2024. I got some venues coming up to do it in 2024. Hmm. You know, being on stage by myself, the first time I've done that in-, in Really? In, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it was uh, very interesting, but I, I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, and the response was great. So right. that's what we do it for, you know. It's like wow. you get that response from an audience, you know, and it was it was pretty positive. <laughs> how does it feel when you see a play going on and you wrote it? How does that feel? That's the biggest thing. It's, it's nerve, first of all, it's nerve wracking in the beginning. Okay. And then there's a, a, a feeling of... Uh, satisfaction or um a, 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 a contentment not not necessarily the right word but mm -hmm. like you've achieved something you know but the nerve-wracking part is the fact that you know when you're an actor you have control over everything you're doing on the stage or before a camera but right. when you are turn your work over to everybody else and then you just <laughs> you have no more control man it is up to the Excuse me. It's up to the actors to do a great job, and of course, directors to do their job in order to make it happen. <clears throat> Excuse me, and and that is um, so that's the nerve wracking part. But um, but I get a, I like to watch the audience when they're yes. watching a play that I wrote yes. and see how it's affecting the audience. And that's my biggest joy. After I've seen the play a couple of times and. That's gone. I go to the theater and I just watch the audience, watch the play, and that's my personal entertainment. <laughs> Is that standing in the back of the of the show? Yeah, I usually sit in the back. I usually sit in the back. back. You know, I don't want to sit in the first row. You no, know, I, I sit in the back. You know, and I just watch the audience and hear they see their responses. You know, mm -hmm. and um, you know when I when my very first play, real quick, yes. I wrote 
and uh, I started crying in one one part of the play when I was writing it. Yes. And, and when I saw the play, literally the audience cried in the same place. You know, it, that that was it was magical. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That you see when you when you say something like that, here's what you do: you get the, you take one of these with you. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Today, as you indicated, is a very special day. It's the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I did a little research, and it, it said if he was alive today, he would be 94 years, 11 months, and 30 days old. My wow. Goodness. Wow. I'm sitting here as we're talking, and every now and then you might see me do that. I'm not trying to get away from you. But here in Los Angeles right now, because we're both in L.A., 11 o'clock on ABC Channel 7, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King Parade today. Right. So when right. you leave here, you got you can run with in, <laughs> do your thing, sir. Do yeah, your yeah, thing. Yeah. You came out with something new. Mm -hmm. I love this one. It's called a memoir. <laughs> Baby yeah. Lee Simon, Odessi, to, uh, towards the light. New book. New book. I'm an author now, Ron. <laughs> I'm an author. I mean, yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I am an author. Odyssey Towards the Light is my memoir. Um, years ago, my sister told me, you just need to stop everything you're doing and write your autobiography. Yeah. We had, I had a, such a, a colorful, colorful life. And, yeah. you know, with, with all the ups and downs, you know, story of a black man growing up in America, we all have our stories. We're not a monolith. You know, everyone's different. You know, I think my story is unique. And yes. um, so... I wrote a memoir, and um, so far, people have been raving about it, telling me that it's an it's an amazing read. Um, you know, it's on Amazon.com, Odyssey Towards the Light, mm -hmm. and um, you know, we just we just uh, launched it back in December of uh -huh. 2023, so it's really really new, and I'm urging people to go and 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 purchase it and um, leave a a five star review on it. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz you know a lot of folks when you say memoir what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, right 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> book just a personal book. When 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 in the, uh I I almost go teach it and I tell my students I said, "You know what? When you need to when you need to know something, I give you what we call the second brain. Here is the second brain." <laughs> right, that, that, that's the world we live in. They, hey, Ron, they they weren't there. We didn't have a second brain right. when we were coming up. Right. <laughs> no, we, we had to get it all all Thank in you. here. <laughs> Thank you. We were lucky to have a, an, an encyclopedia, E N C Y C L O P E. Yeah, remember that? That's right. Back in the day, Back in the day. my goodness. Mm. Future plays you're doing. Can you tell us about? Future plays that I'm doing well. Uh, I have a a movie that's going to be shot in Atlanta in March, a stuttering preacher, um, by uh, Javon Johnson Productions. It's an independent, and um, and then I'll be going to New York. We're actually um, doing a reading of the For the Love of Freedom Haitian trilogy in New York mm -hmm. City in the spring. And um, beyond that, I have a whole bunch of irons in the fire that I'm not uh, at liberty to talk about publicly. Okay. Right? But, um, but you know, it's looking good. 2024 is looking like it's going to be very exciting. You know, um, I'm really looking forward to it. That means I have to, let me, let me see how I get this right. Writer, actor, director, producer, uh, author. <laughs> author, yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, <laughs> and you're doing movies now? Uh, yeah. Just another one to add on. <laughs> I know your family is very, very proud of you, my brother. They're very, very proud of you. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, my family, my friends, you know, my daughter came down from, she's in San Francisco. She came down to visit me during the holidays, you know, after I had my surgery and stuff like that, you know. Yes. And, um, you know, I'm very proud of her. She's doing well in the world. Um, you know, it's always good to uh you know make people proud yes. you know and, yes. and um you know walk this path in in with a purpose you know gotcha yeah <laughs> yeah i got one i got time for one more question okay. what's the most you like about the many things that you do the mm, 
Wow. Well, to answer quickly, um, I just I just love being being um, a creative. Yes. Uh, you know, when I when I'm involved in something like creating, writing something new, that comes either through uh, research or through my own imagination. You know, putting it on paper. Uh, that's a really exciting. Uh, I, I love the excitement of being an actor and and going through the process of creating character and and then having that audience come out. I mean, so many things, man. I, I really can't point to one particular thing, yes. but but I think overall is just that you know I've been blessed of given this charge to be a creative person, and that that you know a lot of people go their whole life and don't know what their calling is, you know, and I know what my calling is, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe Lee, thank you so much for being here today. Oh as man, Ron, it's thank you. Of, my pleasure as we honor yeah. the birthday of renowned civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Please keep on doing what you're doing, sir. And always break a leg. Break thank a leg. you. Thank you. Always good to see you. Happy New Year. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you, Tony. Happy New Year. Okay. Y'all yeah, take thank care. You. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Levi, Levi, Lee Simon. God bless you. Is the right. office, John. I'm your home host, Ron Brewington. Roll it, Tony. We would like to let you know that we're asking our Actors' Choice Squad to help us get former baseball player Kurt Flood into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Now, Kurt passed away January 20th, 1997. He was the husband of one of our wonderful guests, renowned actress Judy Pace. So all you got to do is give us a call at our office, TAC office, 213-349-3941. That's 213-349-3941. We sincerely thank each and every one of you for you being a part of this magnificent award for a great baseball play. Roll it, Tony. Not interested in football, huh? Hey, what about golf? All you need is 600 more teeth and you could be the next Tiger Woods. <laughs> huh? Okay, look, basketball. Look, this is the way Shaquille O'Neal does it. He turns left and he comes up. <laughs> Hang on the rim, baby. Yeah, you try. You try. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now my next guest today is an experienced, committed, and creative director, producer, and writer of television stories. She's also a true veteran of the entertainment industry. According to her bio, her career started in music. And she, oh, there, who's that guy right there? Steve Lamar, that, that's Steve Lamar's getaway. Right. Stevie Wonder. Yes. Yes. Who's working for that guy? I worked for him for 17 years, Stephen, and that's why, you know, he called me broad. Hey, broadcast, how you doing? <laughs> I called Stephen. Okay. You've worked with a lot of famous people yourself, like Kirby Mann, Stan Getz, and Sonny, Sonny Rollins. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Maddie Corrales. Wow, <laughs> thank you so much, Ron. I really appreciate that you've taken the time to be with me today. I love your show. Okay, I'm a fan and um, I, I just love you. Okay, you've been around for so long and this is such an honor. I thank you so much. I'm so thank grateful. You. When uh, Edna told me about you, I said, please, 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 please. She said, Sandra, <laughs> Sandra, if you would, considering when you look at, okay, we just saw my wife and your kids, the many things that you've gotten involved with, many, many things. And so uh, we just thank you very, very much for being on it. And by the way, are you here in LA right now? Yes, I am. Okay, I am a native of sunny California. <laughs> Get back if you're not if you're not if not too busy on Channel Seven right now is the uh -huh. Martin Luther King uh, parade today. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, and uh, again, I am. You know, uh, Martin Luther King Day is so special for me. So as soon as we finish this, okay, I will be giving my homage definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Where were you born at? Wow, I was born in. Los Angeles, California. Uh, the two things my mom told me to remember was my address, 713 East 85th Street, and my phone number, PL22743, okay? <laughs> and that was amazing. That stuck with me. Uh, I was kind of brought up in the um, a, a rough neighborhood, and um, my mom and dad were determined to work really hard to get us out of that area. Uh-huh. And so we moved to um, Altadena, California, mm. and um, you know we started uh, a, a new life. And uh, I'm I'm very I'm very grateful, very grateful. As they call it, California, yeah, it's a love, it's a great little state, <laughs> great little state. 
Okay, here's a question. You ready for this question? Okay. <laughs> Who is Maddie Carruthers? <laughs> Who that be? Who, Who that be? Who, did, who is that woman? Right. Um, you know, it's a great question to ask. Okay. I think Maddie Carruthers is still, you know, evolving. Uh, she's been around, okay, for, for many, many years. Uh, she keeps metamorphosing into more. And I'm just loving to be on the journey that I'm on. And I'm very grateful to have had this opportunity to be on earth. <laughs> Hey, I can feel you. I can feel you. And the thing is, you're still above the earth. That's the good thing. Yes. The good thing. Yes. Yes. Don't get no better than that. It gets no better. Now, I understand that you worked with Norman Lear. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I started with Norman Lear <laughs> back in the early 70s. Okay. And um, wow, what can I say about this man? Okay. He had such a collective shows. Okay. And just to be in the the mix with All in the Family, yes, um, the Jeffersons, Good Times, Maude, okay, just to name a few. And uh, it it was such a great opportunity for me. So I'm I'm again I'm really happy to have been in his presence, and to have learned so much. Okay, about the uh, sitcom world. Okay, and comedy. And uh, all of these b delicious actors and actresses, okay, that just wanted to, you know, express their talent and be who they were. And I was just able to, you know, grab all of that up and hold on tight. And I learned so much, Ron, from from those wonderful, uh, you know, artists. Wow. A lot to say. Once he passed all re recently, but he, his memory will always, always, always be there. Yes. And, and, you know, he left so much behind. I mean, you know, uh, you know, to make it to the years that he has, he's contributed so much and um, it's always within me. And so I'm, I'm glad to have a, take a piece of that and right. bring it, you know, uh, further into the world. I heard it through the grapevine that you sing S I N G. Is that correct? Is that true? <laughs> well, it's very interesting. Okay. Um, you know, you never know, these talents are hidden inside of you somewhere. Right. And you have no idea that you have them. Um, right. They're just, you know, they're just a part of your, you know, uh, I don't know, your DNA, but you don't uh -huh. realize that. So to make a long story short, I sung in the shower <laughs> <laughs> because I just loved to do that. Okay. And, um, it served me well. I'm so glad that it started there because it ended up to be so much more. Um, I got the opportunity to uh, direct and mm -hmm. it was one of my qualities that I was able to show off later in life when that opportunity came up. Uh, it was one of my talents that got me recognized. A woman, a black woman, a black woman director. Wow. <laughs> Says a lot. Wow. Especially in my time, okay? Oh, it was yeah. really hard to do it when I was coming up, okay? But I had this drive and determination. And, um, you know, I kept saying, you know, you have to do this. It's important because there's going to be so many more people that are going to want to go through this experience. And yes. you, they need someone to guide them, okay? Yes. So that that's what pushed me forward. As a director, you also work with equipment. Just happen to have a video of you <laughs> looking at a new camera. Roll it, Tony. <laughs> Camera here. Oh. Camera here. Oh. Camera here. Oh. Camera here. Oh. Wow, there you are, brand new. You've seen a lot of changes in the technology, have you not? Oh, boy, have I ever, okay. <laughs> Keeping up with it, okay, is a challenge, okay, uh -huh. but it's so exhilarating. And, you know, that was so amazing because to be able, you know, to take that camera and put it up on your shoulder, and it's so lightweight now, where before, you know, I used to yes. use cameras and everything was so heavy and, you know, you just had to get the shot. So it, you just did what you had to do. So it's much easier now, okay, so I'm... I'm very happy about that. <laughs> and then there's AI, artificial intelligence. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, it's coming. Okay. And you know, the interesting thing about it is um, it can be such an opportunity for us if it's used in the right way. Okay. okay. And, um, and so that's my purpose is to make sure that, uh, that I do, you know, um, use it in a way that it serves, you know, everyone. Okay. And, and to the best of its technology. So that's, that's, that's where I'm staying with it. Because <laughs> uh, everything, every time I, here's a one, a lot of people are trying to get into this business. You've been there. What advice do you give people who want to get into this business? The advice that I give is. The first advice I would say is you you have to understand who you are first and where you come from. Yes. Okay. Um, as we have grown up as children, we're so innocent. Mm -hmm. And then as we get into the world, okay, through our parents, you know, through our work, through our careers, whatever, uh, through school, whatever, the environment can change a lot. Okay. And so we get into those changes with it and we forget who we are and it's important to let all of it go so that you can go back to that innocence that you came with and where you came to be who you came to be so that you can have exactly what you want and it wasn't until i did that ron okay that i was able to express all of me and continue to do that journey uh, because everyone has one and you want to do it to the fullest. Yes. And so when you get to be my age, what I say to young people, I say to, you know, people that are my age, I say to people in between, just do every moment, stay right yes. in the moment and it will come for you. You won't have to look for it. It'll just knock on your door. They call it ego. I call it Egypt. So I know you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> it. Is. You have, I'm told that you have a new TV show called My Sisters and Me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. About this, please. This this story is 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 um it's based on my mom and her two sisters. And I'm telling the story from my mom's point of view. Yes. And when I was growing up, there was so much drama that was going on all the time. Okay. In the world and in our family and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But what I remember the most was that my mom and her two sisters would always bring laughter into the household. And so there were always shenanigans going on between all three of them. Okay. And it was always from a different perspective. And I loved that. Okay. And so mm -hmm. that's what got me on the journey to wanting to talk about family and love and sisterhood and what that looks like. Okay. And so that's, that's why I started this. Okay. And I just want to ask you, Ron, I mean, when you think about, um, you know, uh, you, do you have sisters in your family? Uh, no, not in my family directly. I have a twin brother. Oh, you have a twin brother. Okay. Well, it's the same. I had seven daughters and one boy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Remember. All right. Well, then speak that, and that's that's the whole point I'm making. Okay, is that everybody can relate. Okay, it could be a sister, it could be a brother, it could be your child, it could be whatever. Yes. But if you can imagine yourself as an adult moving back in with your twin brother. Okay, at this stage in your life, for whatever reason, something just comes up and the two of you have to reunite and live under the same roof. Okay, I and so there's so many stories with these three sisters moving back together, okay, and dealing with all the complications in life. And again, finding that innocence, okay, that they've lost, okay, in the world, okay, and coming back cir full circle and coming back to the real issue, which is love, because that's what family's about. Best four letter word I know. Yeah. <laughs> only mm -hmm. done, only done in a very comical way. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's only one more four letter word that I love so dear. It's called idea. Everything you do starts with an idea. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for that reminder. I love it. Everything. Love it. Indeed. Got a video. Roll it, Tony. <laughs> but, but Jeremiah said he was going to call and confirm. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not know if it's him. 
And anyway, you don't want to sound so desperate. Have a little mystery about yourself, Chef. That's right. Mystery is always good. <laughs> Hi, Elia. It's me, Jeremiah. <laughs> I just wanted to call and say I'm looking for... To be continued. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. I was able to get that 26-second promo clip. So oh. <laughs> thank you so much for letting us use that, really. Thank oh, you you're, so thank, much. Thank you so much for, 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 for showing everybody, okay, the, the, the funny and the comedy in these three women, okay? Uh -huh. um, you know, the show is about a date. Yes. And you can see, okay, the other two are not excited about it, okay? And then all of a sudden, they hear this delicious man's voice, okay? And they're all excited about it, okay? So it's just to show the comedy of how you think of one thing and then something else happens and takes you in a whole different, you know, uh, direction. So thank you. you so much. <laughs> Last question, madam. What's next for you? <laughs> oh, what's next for me? Okay, I'm launching this wonderful show uh, on the 18th, okay, of this month, January yes. the 18th at 5 p.m. This is going to be launched, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm putting these, they're going to be webisodes. It's going to be on YouTube. And um, they're going to be three, two to three minute little, um, you know, segments, okay, episodes uh, for, for 13 shows, okay? And to, to be able to just see how these women, okay, navigate, okay, through this this fun ride that they're going to go on together okay as 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 adult women okay and so i think um i'm i'm i think it's going to be a lot of fun okay these women are extraordinary that are playing the parts as you know uh elia english okay used to be uh on the jamie fox show and she's now on the you know curb your enthusiasm okay and she's going to do a a great job okay as she always does and she is the me and my sisters Okay, and I've, Stephanie is a great singer, okay, performer. You know, Tian was a, is a poet and she's a model. And, you know, so it's just amazing that I have these women at my side, okay, to introduce the show. Maddie, we have learned a lot today. You're quite a lady. I wish that you had the very best on today's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday. Thank you. And please come back again. Please come back again. Definitely. Oh, thank you so Definitely. much. It'd be my honor. Okay. I, ju yes. I just want to thank you again. Okay. Because my you're pleasure. just as special as I am. Okay. All right. And it's so mm -hmm. wonderful that we know that. Okay. And on Martin Luther King Day, I just want to say, you know, this is a special day for all of us. Okay. And I want to give, you know, uh, just, I just thank him so much because of his dream. And so he's made me be able to take my dream. Okay to the next level, just like he did, and to carry his legacy on. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. <laughs> and please thank your publicist, Edna Sun. She's quite a busy lady. Oh, yes, she lady. is. Oh, yes, she is. And, you know, I, she's she believes in this project, okay? And she's, uh, you know, she's right at my side, okay? She's she's my sidekick, I'll say that. So I'm, I'm so grateful to have her. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Maddie Carruthers, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so you. much, Ron. Peace. Roller Tony. <laughs> Okay, uh, do, you, do you have that? Uh, do you want to get into broadcasting? 39B. Okay. No, uh, 39B, this is for getting into broadcasting. Okay. All right. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my next guest today is one of the most talented actors here in Hollywood. Originally from the Midwest, he is making his presence felt good. He is the best remembered playing the role of Ebone in Blue Hill Avenue, the Mansfield 12, doing hard time and nothing like Thanksgiving. Finally, William is also an excellent singer and would love a chance to play Marvin Gaye in a biopic. Please, I hope people are paying attention so they can go in there because I've watched that man play the role of Marvin Gaye. He does a great, great job. So without further ado, please welcome William L. Johnson. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, that's not uh, the gentleman we had in mind, right? He, he comes down in a few moments. Good day today. Um, Okay, let's uh, let's move, let's move let's go on with with the gentleman you see there. That's Tory, uh, and then we'll just come back if 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 he if he comes in. Okay. All right, Tory. Then, gentlemen, our next guest today is here to talk about upcoming event called A Change Is Gonna Come. This is a tribute to the great Sam Cooke, and here to talk about that project is he's well known actor, singer. Oh, he can sing. That young man can sing. I see him looking right now. He can sing. Uh, producer. Tori Brandon Rose. Reese, take it away, Tori. Good afternoon. How are you, my brother? I'm doing good like a brother should. First question, why Sam Cooke? Sam Cooke, to me, is one of the most important artists ever produced in the history of this country. He's right up there next to Louis Armstrong, right up there next to Marvin Gaye and Ray Charles and Billie Holiday. And I, I just feel that he deserves to have the recognition that he sometimes doesn't get because of the way and the manner in which he died. Yes. And I think that's a critical mistake on the part of us, particularly black folk who uh, buy into narratives that are not created by us. And so I think that uh, it's important that we recognize Sam Cooke, not only for his singing, which was uh, a gift from God, you know, starting out with the, the Soul Stirrers, one of the greatest gospel groups ever, and then going on in 1957 to write his hit that sold over 2 million copies, You Send Me. And then after that, having a career for about seven years that was unparalleled. Uh, and he was at the Copacabana in 1964 for the second time. Um, and so he was up there with Nat King Cole and Sammy Davis Jr. and Johnny Mathis and other groundbreaking Black artists that had reached that echelon of success. Um, and then, of course, at the age of 33, he dies tragically much too early and under mysterious circumstances that we will talk about on Saturday night. Um, we'll be out at the Bob Morrison Theater in Lamert Park Village this coming Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, number one to honor Street Corner Renaissance, a group that I helped to start in, uh, about 20 years ago with Maurice Kitchen uh, and Kwame Alexander, the late, great Kwame Alexander. And then we'll go into the Sam Cooke tribute with my band, Everything With Soul, and do a fantastic tribute that night with many of the songs that made him famous. My daughter, one of my daughters, Felicia Diamond, is going to be doing a tribute to Aretha Franklin that night. She's fantastic, and it's going to be in, wonderful. In the family, huh? Let's keep it in the family. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to be there that night, my, one of my background singers. She's also a great lead singer. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have great food. You know, tickets are $25, $50 for VIP, which includes a dinner. $25 includes a dinner option. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be great, man. It's going to be a great time. And tickets are selling pretty fast, so folks yeah. need to get I was going to ask you, how can I get a ticket? <laughs> you can go to Eventbrite and, and punch in Sam Cook Tribute. A change is going to come. And uh, you'll see the Eventbrite link there. Mm -hmm. Or you can, uh, you may be able to buy tickets at night, depending upon, you know, if there are any tickets left. It's, yes. uh, I was going to ask you anything left. Yes. Uh, or go to our website, which is Family Soul, F A M L I S O U L, Family Soul.org. Right. Okay. You're a busy guy, man. You from a, you've always got your head to foot doing something. Yeah, man. Yeah, life is for living, brother. I live every day of my life to the fullest that I can, my capacity, you know? Got you. As you know, right now at this moment, the Martin Luther King Parade is going on. So I'm sure when you finish this, you can go, go, go ahead and see that parade as much as you love. Well, I'm actually going to this parade. Huh? Unfortunately, I have to go and sing today at an event with my uh, group, Street Corner Renaissance. Um, so I'm going to actually miss the parade today. It's, it's happening right now, you know. Uh, but I, I, I wish I wish it the best. I wish the people the best, and uh, let's continue to celebrate year round, Dr. King and all of our heroes. Oh yeah. Where's that Marvin Gaye guy you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Take oh, his part. Marvin Gaye. <laughs> you know, it's interesting when you mentioned Marvin Gaye. I was able to get a star for him and also get a stamp for him. I've never met the man. Never, not one time. Really? He was brother very well, Frankie. He knew him very well. Right, right. I remember that, man. How long did it take you to do that? What, for the stamp? To get the stamp. 16 years. 16 years, yeah. You know, it took me 30 years to get that dedication to Malcolm X. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say that again. You hear that, ladies and gentlemen? 30 yeah. years. That young 30 man years. right there. Yeah, we finally got it done last year. Yes, <laughs> last year. We're building and expanding on it. We want to expand into Englewood and Hawthorne and Torrance and keep it going. We, we believe that Malcolm should be celebrated right alongside Martin, that they were yes. brothers spiritually, 
that they were brothers in real life and that they were making plans to do some fantastic things for our people. Yes. And so we don't want to forget Malcolm, as wow. we said. Wow, amazing. Right. How, did, how did you feel when they told you that they had made that uh, situation that you've been trying all of that, that time? How did you feel when they said, we're going to give you this this this, this event? How did you feel? It, it was a wonderful feeling. Um, it felt like a lifetime of work had come to fruition, which it did. Um, because I, I still feel so vibrant and I still feel so young. And so <laughs> those 30 years went by so quickly. Um, my children have grown up and everything. Yeah. And my, my children and grandchildren be able to say, hey, daddy, you did that. <laughs> right. You did that, right. <laughs> that, Every that now was... and then do you walk by this and mm. <laughs> And to know that no matter what happens, as the history of this city is written, that your name will be enshrined in the history of this city, you know, forever is a good feeling. I feel good about that because I didn't have a father growing up. Yeah. And so I I had to create my own legacy, you know. And so I'm always I'm always proud of myself. Um, and you know, why have, not? And why not? You did the work. You yeah. did the work. Just like you would be proud of that that Marvin Gaye stat. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the great things that you do. You, you know? know, as people, the way we feel about when you see something, you put your soul into it and you say, wait a minute, we need to do something, no matter how long it takes. Mm -hmm. You know, you have that kind of personality, and I love it about you that you do the, you get a lot of stuff done. Well, it, it's important that we not only, you know, talk, but we walk. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, back to this Sam Cooke thing, and this man, in addition to his singing, man, this man took the time to say, look, if you're going to have a segregated audience at my concert, I'm not going to sing. Right. And so what you need to do is integrate this audience and put my people with everybody else mix it up and let everybody enjoy it from the same areas. You know what I'm saying? So he he uh, he broke down those those barriers back in those days. And then he had the foresight on the business side to open his own publishing company and his own record label and then connect it with my, my cousins down in New Orleans, you know, the Baptiste family. Yes. Open up their own uh, studio. So they, they were moving to make sure that Black artists were independent that they had the means, uh, the, the control of the means of production of their art and their product and their intellectual properties. He owned his intellectual properties. And this is this is 60 something years ago, man. You know, this is 60 something years ago. So there are, there are lessons there because many of us today still don't understand the business. Right. And we have the internet and all. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have cell phones, gotcha. you know. So uh, I, I admire that and I think it's important. And we, we have Sam Cooke in our curriculum, our See a man, be a man program for young men, young black right. male, Latino males, and we, have, we have a. Mm -hmm. Got you. Since we have a moment here, please tell us about you know, folks. This gentleman does a film festival every year. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's called <laughs> I've known rivers, and every year we, uh, and that and that I've known rivers comes from the Langston Hughes poem, "The Negro Speaks of Rivers." Yes, he wrote when he was about nineteen years old, and we do that every December, uh, November, December. And uh, it celebrates, you know, one of one or two of our heroes that are still alive. But it also celebrates the history of Black film. It's important, for example, this film just came out uh, with Lakeith Stanfield, uh, you know, uh, Book of Clarence. And it's the first movie with an all, uh, first biblical movie with an all-Black cast since 1936, Green Pastures. Film called Green Pastures in 1930. So, so that's, how many years is that count? 80-something years or 87 years. And so uh, this is a very significant film. So we were able to take our group, uh, the family organization, out for a night at the movies uh, just last week. Mm -hmm. and, the film. and so we try to teach lessons with our film festival that are above and beyond just to going and seeing a movie. You know, what have you learned from this film? Right. Uh, 1915, when that film came out, Birth of a Nation, it resulted in race riots. So film oh. is very critically important and film is very powerful. Yes. People believe what they see on film. They've, they've had major discussions about this film online. You know, I don't know if you've been privy to it, but uh, some people who are, you know, I think so religiousized that they can't see beyond their own belief system and get into the artistic side yes. of why it needs to be made. You understand? So we, we do this film festival, I've known Rivers, for, for various reasons. We also have a Tuesday night series. Tomorrow we'll be on talking about that film at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time yes. called The Culture. And uh, people can go to my Facebook page. It's always live on Facebook. Um, and uh, 
and check us out or they can get the Zoom link from us and stuff yes. like that. So, so we're doing as much as we can to push forth, uh, you know, progress and the liberation that we all need. The uh, question is, when when the application, when does the event, event start again this year? So uh, the I've Known Rivers will be, I don't have the exact date in my head right now, and uh -huh. I have, but it'll be in early December or late November. And it'll be all over the place. You'll see it all over Instagram, Facebook, um, you know, TikTok, <laughs> all of that. <stuff. laughs> all these avenues we have now that we didn't have when you and I first started out, young brother. Yes, I hear exactly what you mean. It's been yeah. uh, a lot of changes have gone on. We've seen a lot of changes going. Yeah, That's change. Good. <laughs> that is good. Um, anything yeah. else you want to let us know about what you're doing? Once again, how to get some tickets for the Sea of Sam Cook well, event? You can go to Eventbrite and go to a change is going to come, tribute to Sam Cook, and get your tickets $25 for the general admission, $50 for VIP tickets, which includes dinner. Uh, that's this Saturday, January the 20th, starting at 7 o'clock, tribute to Street Corner Renaissance, uh, a cappella's. Greatest group in the, in the country. <laughs> and then my band, Everything With Soul, and myself, my daughter, Felicia, Orlando, and we'll be doing our thing. Uh, you know, we have uh, Roland Bynum is going to be hosting. Oh, yes, Roland Bynum, yes. Yeah, I, know, I know you and Roland know each other. It's yeah. be what a guy. Yeah, yeah we're, we're looking forward to a great night uh, celebrating a great man. So come on out, get your tickets. And this is all for our programs. We have youth programs. We have film festivals. we got the Malcolm X Project. We got the classic photo we do every year. We got a conference we do at Charles Drew University every March for yes. young people. Uh, so we're doing a lot of a lot of good work. We're very proud of the work. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Kimberly Grigsby, Shaka Satori, and all of the other people, Andre, that works with me, uh, Perky, and so many others that work with me uh, to get this work done. So, and thank you, brother, for bringing me on. I appreciate it. Anytime, you. anytime. We love to bring because when you leave, a lot of people call. I have had people call me and say, "Who was that guy?" I said that's Tori. <laughs> Sydney's going to be sitting with me on Saturday night to discuss oh, really? Malcolm X. I mean, uh, not Malcolm X, but Malcolm is in there, but Sam Cook this coming Saturday night. Yeah, Sydney's a, a heck of an educated person. <laughs> She's extremely smart and intelligent and well read and well studied and all that. So we're going to have a good conversation about the death of Sam Cook, but also his life. So that's going to be Saturday night, also a critical discussion about Sam Cook. Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. How did that happen? Right on. Henry, thank you so very, very much again, and God bless you. And enjoy today's date. The man would have been 94 years old, uh, right. 11 months and 30 days. That's how old the FEP were alive today. Yes, thank you, Appreciate it. Okay. Peace All right. Love thank you so much. Take care. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for being with us today. We had a good time and want to make sure you have one. Um, we're, just, we're going to go ahead and wrap it at this time. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Take care.